episode three of the Four Downs podcast, where we cover the four biggest topics in the NFL world in 20 minutes or less. Joining us today is Josh Velez from Kabloomski Sports Talk. Josh, how are you doing today? What's going on, guys? How y'all doing today? Good. All right. Our first topic is Thursday night football. Unfortunately, due to Hurricane Helene, I was unable to watch the game in its entirety last night. Um, however, I did watch the highlights today, uh, read enough, so I think I've got it covered. Um, my notes to this game, too close for comfort for Dallas. This is a game they probably should have won fairly handedly. Too many penalties on both sides of the ball, including multiple costly penalties on special teams as well. Granted, um, Dallas is fairly decimated by injuries. You had Mike Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence going out last night, uh, along with Duran Bland being out for the entirety of the season thus far. Um, just from watching that game, while Dak was extremely efficient, they lack a running game. And if Dallas matches up against a team who can take CeeDee Lamb out of the game, I don't know where else they go. Um, Josh, what do you think? Well, uh, great point there. Um, in order to have a good passing game, I think you have a good running game. And that's what they're lacking there. Um, they're trying. I mean, I believe I saw a fullback in there a few times, Loki. And um, they need to be pass catchers. Unfortunately, they're going to be pass heavy. And until they get a run game, they're just going to be launching the ball up and down the field. With Rico Dowdle taking over, he caught a he caught a pass for a touchdown, but wasn't able to get anything going on the ground. I was actually really high on Rico Dowdle coming into the year. Same. Um, with Ezekiel Elliott, I thought that was a strange pickup, more of a, a safety net kind of thing. Right. I I feel like they overutilized um, Zeke Elliott the first two weeks and finally have started to get Dowdle more involved. Um. Like you said, they were passing to fullbacks. They were they had fullbacks running the ball last night. I, know. I want to look up real quick the box score. Who is Dallas's second option last night for running or passing the ball? For for pass for, catching. For pass catching. Excuse me. Was it Brandon Cooks? Ooh. What yeah, I think it was. I think it was Brandon Cooks. So Zeke Elliott, three attempts for eight yards. Or CeeDee Lamb, three attempts for eight yards. They have CeeDee Lamb running the ball. Yeah, Rico yeah. Dowdle, 11 for 46. Uh, Luke Key, the fullback, like you said, two attempts for eight yards. Receiving Jake Ferguson, yeah. seven receptions for 49 yards. Outside of Ferguson and Lamb, they are not. They have nobody catching the ball. Nobody. Elliott. And that's in, it's incredible. Zeke Elliott, one catch. Jalen Tolbert, three catches. Rico Dowdle, one. Brandon Cooks, one. Hunter Lep, uh, Luke Key, two. I mean, where do you go from there? Do you start trying to feed Brandon Cooks? Do you rely on Jake Ferguson? Well, somebody needs to step up. Somebody definitely needs to step like, up, like you said. I think Tolbert, I think he had a couple of targets in there as well. I don't know if you can see how many yeah. targets he had there. But somebody definitely needs to step up. CeeDee Lamb is getting force-fed, but he's not going to be able to last this. It's not going to last this long. Um, bring, going back real quick to the running game, uh, giving credit to Zeke Elliott, though, he did have a couple break uh, out runs there, um, show little glimpses of the pass, which – was look promising, but they didn't keep going to him. Um, it just yeah. the lack of the running game, obviously game scripted and stuff like that played a factor. But somebody needs to step up. Jake Ferguson is a little bump, um, has a couple bumps and bruises too, but he definitely stepped up to the plate. But somebody else, like you said, needs to um, come out of the woodworks for them for sure. That's a, I mean, that's going to be when it comes down or comes time for the trade deadline. You'd have to imagine that. Dallas is going to be in on everybody. If Amari Cooper, anybody who is who is being moved, you have to imagine Dallas takes a shot at somebody. You're not going to pay um, Dak Prescott sixty million dollars a year and give him one option to throw to. And like we mentioned, the defense is really, really banged up right now. You've got one of the best defensive players in the game uh, with a high ankle sprain. That's Michael Parsons. You have a Pro Bowl cornerback out for the year. And the, 
the the guys they're throwing out there are not getting the job done. You see Malik Neighbors just dicing them up last night. So it'll be interesting to see where Dallas goes from here. Uh, that takes us to the end of our first topic, though, and we are moving to picks. All right, so let's go into these Sunday games. I'm going to read them off. Josh, just give me a quick pick while you're uh, going with that team. We've got the Broncos at 1-2 and two, visiting the Jets at 2-1. and one. Jets, Jets, seven and a half point favorite. Right, Jets, Jets hands down. Jets hands down on yeah. that one. They're rolling. Bo Nix is, yeah. Bo Nix is, is not the truth. But they I'm, played I'm well. They, the Denver played well against the Bucks, so you can't count them out any given Sunday, right? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm not sold on him just yet. Same. Uh, Vikings, Packers, Vikings 3 and 0, visiting the Packers in Lambeau at 2 and 0. Green Bay, a three point favorite. Jordan Love coming down to game time as a game time decision. Per Matt LaFleur. Josh, who do you got in that one? Man, Jordan Love, if he plays, this is going to be a great game. A great game regardless. But what we got to look at here is the defense. Defense from uh, Minnesota. Those guys over there, Brian Flores has them playing lights out. The, the, the way they're disguising defenses, they're making C.J. Stroud, Brock Purdy, people who read defenses look like they never played football before. So as long as they keep on doing that, I got the Vikings sticking it over. Good. Good pick. That's where I was. I would go as well. Uh, another divisional matchup: Saints at Falcons. I'm a big Saints believer. I know you've mentioned uh, in our pre-talk that you're big on Derek Carr. Where are you going in that game? Yeah, this is a big one too. Being a Bucks fan, I'm definitely going to be watching this one. Um, I think that the Saints pull this one out. I think Kirko is finding um, is finding his wide receivers and, and is getting the balls to the right people. But Derek Carr is playing lights out right now. Okay. Uh, Eagles Bucks. This is actually probably my favorite matchup of the week. Two teams that are two and one, um, and may be struggling a little more than they should. Eagles didn't look great last week or the week prior. Where are you going on Eagles Bucks? Man, this is the payback game from last year, right? I mean, uh, the Bucks um, took them out on um, the playoffs and. Um... Pretty uh, high fashion there, so they got a little chip on their shoulder. I believe the game's in Philly, um, so or excuse me, in Tampa, right? Tampa, and um, and uh, we're gonna be ready. But I think that Philly's coming in with a little chip on their shoulder and coming out with the victory. Unfortunately, all right, I will go the opposite on that. I would, okay. I would take the Bucks, but hey, you're the one picking today. Um, <laughs> Bengals zero and three. Going into the lowly Panthers, Cincinnati, only a four and a half point favorite over the Panthers. Who you got there? Hey, and they're going to be 0 and 4 after the, or 0 and 5 after this week because uh, Panthers with uh, their Red Rocket is um, something to watch out for. Um, he is passing. He, Canellis has him reading the field. Deontay Johnson is relevant now. And um, they're, they're rolling over there in Carolina. I'm, I'm a believer in them right now, at least for this week. I didn't. I, I don't watch Panthers football. Um, I watch winners like the Chiefs. However, I saw that Deontay Johnson stat line, yeah. and why couldn't he do that for me in fantasy like the past four years? I've been a right. Deontay Johnson guy for years. Finally gave up on him, and now it looks like he's turning things around. Oh, yeah. He's Jags, Owen. Yeah. Jags, Owen, three. Uh, going to Houston, two and one. Houston, a six point favorite. Coming off uh, what you could only call an embarrassing loss to the Vikings. Oh, yeah. Who do you got there? Yeah, Houston for sure, hands down. I, I, I like where Jacksonville is trying to build something there, man, but they're just not there defensively yet. CJ Stroud with all the weapons that they got over there, he's just going to pick them apart. I feel like uh, CJ Stroud after last week's performance is is coming back with some vengeance. So I got Houston on top. All right, Steelers at the Colts. Uh, Steelers 3-0, and probably the biggest shocker of the undefeated teams. They are a two-and-a-half point favorite going into our friend Alex's uh, Colts, 1-2. and two. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, listen, defense wins championships, right? And um, Pittsburgh's got a great defense over there. Um, not taking away anything from the offensive side that um, Pittsburgh is providing. But as long as that as TJ Watt is playing, uh, you got to look out for that guy. And I got Pittsburgh on top again. He's the scariest human being I've ever watched. He's so, so good. So good. How is he, how is he better than his brother? And his brother <laughs> being – whatever their parents fed them growing up, unbelievable. Seriously. Um, Rams at – The Indianapolis Colts fucking suck. 
Well, and as I, I say this as a Colts fan, right. we suck. We we are we cannot sustain a, a drive. Um, the, the only way we're going to be able to do it is is when a really defensive game. That's or just, when you need to throw a sixty yard bomb all the time. Just, just pick up that. like one sixty yard bomb and and you'll be. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Rams, Bears. Not a great game. Bears are three point favorite. Josh, where are you there? Oh, man, this is ugly. This is ugly. But, hey, uh, Caleb Williams figures it out this week. Um, Caleb Williams figures it out this week. He gets some type of rapport with wide receivers, and um, he gives his punter a break. I do have Bears on top on this one. All right, we're not going to spend too much time on the next uh, four games or the next three games. They're all trash. Commanders, Cardinals, go. Cardinals. Uh, Patriots, 49ers. Ooh, Niners. Niners ten point favorite. Yeah, Browns Kittle's come, at Kittle's the Raiders. Right. Browns at the Raiders. Listen, Raiders. I'm a huge fan of what Antonio Pierce got going on. So Raiders for me. All right, uh, a great game Sunday night football. Bills Ravens. Bills Ravens. I was waiting for this one. Ravens. I have Ravens all day. Lamar's going to figure it out. Offensive line needs to figure it out. But as long as you have the MVP back there controlling the offense, they're going to be good. Wrong. Um, I actually, because of my app, I place this Chiefs Chargers up top. We don't need to talk about that. It's Chiefs by 50 over the Chargers. Easy. Um, and we, we're doing this. I've talked about this on the podcast for this two Monday night football games. I hate it. Um, Titans at Dolphins, Miami, a one point favorite. That's so obviously ugly. two or less. Yeah. So ugly. Um, I, I do have Miami squeaking this one out though. Um, I feel like if Huntley, Huntley starts, uh, they give him a little bit of a little edge running the ball a little bit. So I do feel like Miami kind of pushes that one through. And final game, Seattle at Detroit, 3-0 and at 2-0. and Detroit is a three-and-a-half point favorite. Listen, Detroit is being a place where it's tough to play at, and uh, their fans are ready to win. They're ready, they're ready to win now. Detroit on top for sure. All right. All right, that wraps up our game picks. Um, <laughs> We have not been doing well, me and Alex, recently. So, Josh, hopefully your picks kind of turn things around for us. We're clipping less bad takes, more good takes right, going right. forward. All right, so as we go into week four of the NFL season, um, let's touch on where the award winners would be if the season ended today. I'll give my picks, and then we'll see if Josh uh, agrees or disagrees. I've got Josh Allen running away with the MVP. He's taking this Bills team minus his two best weapons from last year. Granted, the awards voters probably don't take that into strong consideration. They're just looking at production. But having this team at 3-0 and is incredible. He's doing it with his legs. He's leading the league in passing touchdowns. He's leading the league in QB rating. Josh, agree or disagree? Josh Allen for MVP. Well, I, I agree to an extent. Um, I, I What he's doing over there with no weapons is truly amazing. Um, but my MVP um, that I got is Derek Carr. The reason why I got Derek Carr as my MVP is nobody wanted him. Nobody wanted him in fantasy. Nobody wanted him in real life. And he's doing what he's doing right now. I mean, he has 585 yards um, completed uh, through the passing and six touchdowns, which is tied for third, only two interceptions. And he's bringing that team into relevance, not only in the division, but in the conference as well, where he's doing is tremendous. Nothing to take away from yeah, Josh we, Allen, though. Yeah, we touched on what the Saints have been doing last week. Unbelievable. They, he, he's brought that offense back to life, even without Chris Olave. Uh, and I'm going to get it right this time, Alex. Rashid Shahid and um, Alvin Kamara brought back to life. Man. They didn't look great last week, but a divisional game, I think that's really going to decide whether they're uh, legit or not, how they perform against the Falcons this week. I agree. Moving on to defensive player of the year. I don't think there's any argument here. It's Aiden Hutchinson. Six and a half sacks in three weeks, 35 QB pressures. That's first place by a lot. He's in his own universe right now. Um, he's on track for something like 34 sacks and 145 QB pressures. That's not going to hold. I'm aware. I'm, I know that's not how the season's going to end up. But does he have an insurmountable lead as of now if the season ended today? Absolutely. Hands down. The guy is just a freak show out there. Um, the way he's pressuring quarterbacks, you have to look for 97 
all the time as a quarterback playing against them. Not, and he is on full tilt motor all the time. He's always in the backfield somehow, some way, pressuring, either disrupting plays or whatnot. But he's hands down right now defensive player of the year. Yeah, and I watched part of a, uh, of one of his games. I think, like you said, it was against the Bucks. I was oh, watching yeah, that game, us. and it, it was it was every single play. Didn't matter. I, I I saw him try to throw a tight end uh, to help out. I saw them use uh, was it Bucky Irving? Yeah, uh, as a yeah. little extra cute, and he was ju- just moving people out of the way. Um, so yeah, I, I don't see his who technique can. other than his... maybe. Right. I'm sorry. No, you're okay. Uh, I said, other than someone like Chris Jones getting just red hot, TJ Watt getting yeah. red hot. Yeah. Um, he's in that he's in that conversation now with the greats, uh, the current greats of the game. Now, here's where it gets super interesting. Offensive player in the year, the three guys I have in consideration, all coming from the same division. CeeDee Lamb in Dallas, like we talked about, he yeah. is the offense in Dallas right now. Correct. Saquon Barkley. Um, staying in the same division, going to the Eagles with 341 rushing yards and four touchdowns. And then not necessarily a surprise, but a surprise to be in this conversation, Malik Neighbors. Oh, yeah. um, could he win Offensive Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year? If the season ended today, he would. He would be oh, Offensive yeah. Rookie of the Year and Offensive Player of the Year. Of those three, or feel free to throw your own name out there, who do you think will take the award through three weeks of the season? Well, listen, those are three good candidates, and I think uh, those three are very well-deserving. But to me, it has to be Milk Neighbors. What he's doing over there, you're talking about a team that's completely trash, I mean, and making them somewhat relevant. I mean, really, they, they're force-feeding the ball. I get that's what they're doing over there in Dallas as well, force feeding CD. But the way he's doing it, and the way they're moving him around, um, is is just huge. And um, he, to me, is is head over heels in the rookie um, 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 offensive player of the year. But tight tight race. But I think neighbors gets it. All right. Well, agree. Like I said, agree. Disagree. I'm extremely impressed by Malik Neighbors. And like I said, I think the Giants may have won that game last night yeah. uh, had Neighbors been on the field on that last drive, which would have – I mean, that would have been – talking about a coming out party. For our last segment, um, I identified two teams that I think are major fallers as far as power rankings or just in general. Um, and then two teams who I'm currently buying a ton of stock in, hypothetically, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. Um my fallers, a team that's completely fallen from grace, the Bengals. Uh, 0-3, lost, of course, to the Chiefs, fair enough. But they also lost to Washington and um, New England week one. And New England week one, a game where the Bengals couldn't get much going on offense at all. And then jump forward to week three against Washington where they couldn't get, they couldn't slow them down at all on defense. So I'm having trouble identifying what the problem is in Cincinnati. And the conclusion I've come to is it's everything. There is something wrong with either team chemistry or who knows, um, lingering injuries. I think you hit it on the head. Sorry, go ahead. No, I think you hit it on the head. I think it's team chemistry, brother. I think it's 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 a locker room thing. I think that um, any athletes know when the locker room is is an X factor. You either you either have that tight knit you know locker room, or there's a lot of distractions, a lot of divas, something like that, and it and it plays and it shows on Sundays. And I think that's the factor there. Uh, a diva, maybe. Well, okay, the diva could be the front office refusing to work, or maybe kind right. of string Jamar Chase along. Right. But Jamar Chase, I don't think he really has a leg to stand on, given that he still has another year on his contract. Yeah, yeah, and I, didn't I think like that's that. yeah. I think that threw the whole um, preseason off, as well as Joe Burrow working his way through injuries. Now the Texans, they beat two so-so teams week one yeah. and two. Then they play Minnesota and get the shit kicked out of them. Oh yeah, um, that was in. That was embarrassing. 34-7. I thought the Texans would be the ones that really exposed the Vikings. Like you said, the defense over there, well-coached, 
yeah, tons of talent that we may have overlooked. Mm-hmm. Where do you see the Texans going forward? Are you in agreement that they have fallen, or do you think that was just one bad week? I think that was one bad week. Bad week. I think that was Brian Flores doing what Brian Flores does, uh, disguising defensing, uh, defensives, and um, just – making the quarterback's night a living hell. I think that what he's doing over there defensively with the players that he has is just tremendous. And I think that was a one bad week for the Texans. I think they figured it out. Okay, because they have the Jags coming up. Mm-hmm. So, like we talked about, that should be a fairly easy game. Right. But then they play the Bills. So we yeah. will see. Yeah, I'm leaving out of my fallers, the 49ers and Dolphins, due to primarily – just major injury concerns. Yeah. I have trouble putting them in that category. Um, my risers, mm-hmm. I don't think we need to talk too much more about Minnesota. Everything we've said uh, kind of covers it. Minnesota is ranked in ESPN's power rankings, number three overall. They're up something like 14 spots. Yeah. They are a, that is a dangerous team. Um, and we, they can do a lot of damage in that division going to green Bay this oh, yeah. week. Oh, yeah. Then they play the Jets at home, and then they get the Lions at home. They could beat yeah. two division rivals uh, in the next three weeks and kind of cement themselves at the top of that division. Right. Uh, with a minute and 15 we have left, I want to touch on the Bills. Mm-hmm. Um, we've talked about the Bills quite a bit uh, in recent episodes. Josh Allen just willing them to victories. Um, James Cook out of the backfield showing that he is a true bell cow. And then Keon Coleman, sort of a coming out party last week. Um, where do you project the Bills um, throughout the rest of the season? Are they a true contender or are they a fringe playoff team as attrition sets in with the lack of weapons they have? No, I, I think that they're true contenders, brother. I really do. I think one name you missed uh, missed out on there was Khalil Shakir. I believe that's how you say his name, Shakir. Yeah, Khalil Shakir, yes. Khalil Shakir, excuse me. That guy right there is the next Amal Ross St. Brown, in my oh, opinion. Hold on, hold on, Josh. We have, yep. we have breaking news. Um, the Chicago oh. White Sox have officially set the modern Major League Baseball uh, loss record for a single season. God, they're such – Fucking dog shit. All right, 121 so so losses on the bad, season. Dude. Um, the Angels could not do it. They they swept the Angels this week. Um, so the Angels can't do anything right. They literally cannot beat the worst team in Major League Baseball history. Um, Good job, so I figured Angels. I had to interrupt that. <laughs> they are fucking dog shit. Yeah, They're nice. also – They're made they up of like – Oakland? Oakland, I think they like, are a worse. I think they are a worse baseball team Dude, in Oakland. I think they are. In- if Chicago, if you took Chicago's lineup outside of Jose Abreu, mm-hmm. and just kind, or sorry, Luis Robert, and just spread them out over the major leagues, ninety percent of that team wouldn't have a job. Yeah, they are the so fucking yeah. bad. Yeah. Anyway, and, and let's think, go back to the Bills. I think, I think yeah. this would be a good, because I wanted to end the episode with a little Oakland A's talk. Um, RIP to the Oakland A's. That's a good spot to uh, talk about it for the next 30 seconds. Um, it's disgusting what John Fisher has done to to the city of Oakland and all those people. Anyone who says, oh, well, they, you haven't showed up to the games, you just don't know what's going on. The, they have no. not put in any sort of effort. The stadium is, is a piece of shit. Like, John Fisher has, has willingly just not put any sort of money into the team. Why would any fan knowingly give money to him? Why would anyone want to give money to John oh, Fisher yeah. if he's just going to keep it and not reinvest it into the team? So if you say, Here's- oh, well, they didn't show up, that's it. No, that's not what it is. This guy is just a piece of trash. He didn't want to pay the minor leaguers $400 during COVID, like $400 a week. What are you talking about, Alex? It's Moneyball. It works. Moneyball's the <laughs> I got, best. I got a this personal isn't even money connection with, with Oakland, too. This isn't even yeah, Moneyball. I got, two, I got two buddies over there that, that, that play for Oakland, and they, I mean, the worst organization they ever played for. One of them still plays for them, but it's in the minor league system. Now they got pushed down. But yeah, he, Don't drop just, names. Was he no, good? Because <laughs> they probably sent him down because he was good. Because they're just well, tanking. Well, he, did, he, he, did, he did come up a few times uh, to the show, but then it then brought him back down. So, Before we finish on the Bills, here's my fix. Mm-hmm. Let's say I own a major league team in Spring Hill, Florida, and I want to move my team to Nashville. Mm-hmm. I think the team should have to go up to auction to an ownership group in Nashville before you're allowed to move the team. If nobody Ooh. in Nashville wants to own that team, then you're more than welcome to move them to Nashville and take over. 
But, for example, if they're trying to move to Vegas, I think a Vegas ownership group should have a crack at buying the team. Take the fucking Marlins. The Marlins don't matter to anyone here. No one cares about the Miami Marlins down here. Yeah. They they used they were better when they were the Florida Marlins. Just send them yeah. to Vegas. Keep the A's there. Like the the team should belong to the city. I don't I don't care what anyone else has to say. The team should belong to the city. You want a new franchise? You go talk to Rob Manfred and you convince him to open a franchise in fucking Montreal or Nashville Rob or, or anywhere know. else. But Rob teams, Manfred doesn't know his left hand from his right. Teams hand. belong to the city unless Idiot. the city is just like yeah we don't care about them get get rid of them. Like they should right. not belong to these owners. It's ridiculous. If they're paying for the fucking stadium already, like why why do they not belong to the city? That's it. I, I hate John Fisher. I agree. Hate him. Hate him. And I hope you hear this. I just John. I'm a, I, I like I, just real quick. Sorry, uh, my last two cents. To to caveat off of that is you talk about the fans and in, in the city and stuff a lot. That's huge, man. I'm a big historian of the game, and um, like history, man, like. Like Oakland, like that's a historic franchise, man. That was they get some big time players, some big time games were there. Like, come on, man, what are we doing? You know, that one of just the greatest me. rotations, the Barry Zito, oh Tim Hudson God. years. That's where Reggie Jackson played. That's where Ricky Henderson played. Oh, dude, when you think of like, Ricky Henderson, you think of him as a as an I A. Mean, you know what the, I'm saying? The Bash like, Bros, like that's like one Bash of the most Bros. Yeah, well known duo. Man. They they partially saved baseball. Like McGuire helped save baseball. All that man. stuff saved baseball. And you're taking so it, you're true. bringing it to fucking Sacramento, and then Vegas. I don't care about Vegas. They're in the yeah. desert. That city shouldn't even exist. No one should be out there. <laughs> we shouldn't be putting unless you're. That is the worst. That job. is just a horrible city. I love The Hangover, by the way. Love that movie. But holy yes, shit, yeah. that city should not exist. But uh, also, the Tigers advanced to the postseason with their victory over the White Sox. Man, uh, you talk about a run there. Yeah. Tigers had a run there at the end, didn't they? Yeah, they turned the I gas mean, they were, on. They were out of contention for a while. They went like on a 23 oh, yeah. and like 11 streak They had like a less like than that. 1% chance to make the playoffs. Man, like that, and that, that, it reminded me of... Um, it reminded me of the year that the Nationals went on that run. Uh, when I think they ended up winning that year. Yeah. Was it 2019. Yeah. yeah. Like they were not supposed to be even thought of in the playoffs. And then they just caught hot wind. So, yeah. Yeah. Watch out for the Tigers. All right. I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, let's have our last 30 seconds here. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So before we before we, we, we switch to baseball, you were talking about the Bills. Um, I'll go ahead and restart that question. Where do you see the Bills the rest of the season? You were bringing up Khalil Shakir. So let's start right. the timer and knock that out. Go ahead. Yeah, so Khalil Shakir, um, hopefully I'm saying that right. He reminds me a lot of Amar St. Brown. Um, stature, the way he catches the ball, he uses his hands. And I want to say, I might get fat checked, but I don't think he dropped the pass last year, and that continued to this year. The way he bounces off of uh, would-be tacklers is just truly amazing. He, he can fit in the slot, can fit in the outside, and what Josh Allen is doing with him is just outstanding. So, yeah, I like what they got going on over there. Right, well, the, that's who I'm worried about in the AFC Championship. Again, it seems like the Chiefs and Bills – meet up at some point in the playoffs every year if the Chiefs oh, yeah. don't win a Super Bowl. Brady All right, that winning. should do it for us, though. That should do it for us. Thanks, 33 man. minutes, that's okay. We'll we'll put in a, an apology at the beginning. <laughs> we are sorry for going fault. over. Oh, yeah, here, hold on. All right. Oh, are you ready for me? All right, that does it for us on the Four Downs podcast. We covered... Four topics, as always, not quite under 20 minutes. We'll work on that. We touched on a little bit of baseball as well. Big thanks to Josh from Kablumski Sports Talk. Uh, thanks, check him out on Instagram. Are you just on Instagram right now, Josh? Yes, sir. Uh, Kablumski Sports Show on Instagram as of right now. All right. Check thanks, out guys, all of the uh, – are you welcome? Check out all of the podcasts under the Chaotically Intolerant uh, Multimedia Group. And, of, of course, like, subscribe, follow us on all your favorite podcast networks, including YouTube. We'll see you next week.